By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing with my green control deck and I am playing against a deck uh, that's all about the card Martyrs of Corliss. Now, if you have no idea what that card does and how it works, I'm right now going to dive into both of these decks, explaining a little bit about the deck deck behind them and showing you, you a picture of both of these decks. Now, if you're like, just get me to the match, I understand. You can look in the description below where you will find a timestamp and it will take you directly to the opening game. My opponent today is Olof. Olof, welcome to the channel. Olof is from Sweden and he is playing this very interesting deck that's completely based around Martyrs of Corliss. Now, if you're not familiar with this card, it's from the Antiquities expansion, two white and three, and it's a one six summon bodyguard. So it's family of the veteran bodyguard, a card I really, I really like. And uh, Martyrs says, unless Martyrs of Corliss is tapped, any damage done to you by artifacts is instead applied to Martyrs of Corliss. You may not take this damage yourself, though you may prevent it if possible. No more than one bodyguard of your choice can take damage for you in this manner each turn. So you cannot divide the damage if you have multiple um, Martyrs in play. But this is really, really uh, nice because you have certain artifacts and there's one in this, well, multiple in this deck, but um, one that really pops out of this deck list, and that is Bottle of Suleiman. And um, the bottle, what it says is, you need to flip a coin, it's a four, and it's from the Arabian Nights expansion, and one, and flip a coin, and with opponent calling heads or tails while coin is in the air. And if the flip ends up in the opponent's favor, the bottle does five damage to you. Now here is where the combo starts working off, because the five damage is going to the martyr instead. So it's not going to you, but to the martyr, because it's taking damage that you get from the artifacts. And if the flip is in the favor of the caster, then you get a 5-5 five, five flying gin. So that's uh, that's pretty cool, that 5-5 five, five gin. And let's see what other tricks uh, my opponent has up his sleeve. I also see some mana volts. Obviously, mana volts hurt you when they are tapped. And that seems to be about it. So when you're looking at this list, what else um, I notice here is the Sage of Latinam, a very useful creature. And that combos off really well with the Tetravis there. He plays with two of them. Tetravis is a 4-4 flying creature for six. And during your upkeep, you can choose to take off counters because it's actually a 1-1 with three counters. You can take the three counters off and then you get Tetravite. Well, actually, you can also take one counter off or two counters. It's up to you as the controller of the Tetravis. And the nice thing is with these Tetravites, um, you could then say, okay, I have flying one once, but potentially you can also use the Sage of Latinam to... Um, draw a card for them and this is particularly useful when people are using artifact removal on your artifact spells and then you can say okay uh, you play a disenchant for instance on one of my tetravite i'm going to tap my sage of latinam and then i'm going to get a card for it in return and there you have card advantage so very useful creature and another useful creature there is obviously the archaeologist there it's uh, two white and one and what you can do with this beautiful one one creature is you can pay two and tap it to bring back target artifact from the graveyard to your hand now obviously this is great with chaos orb but also with the bottle that we talked about earlier so you can flip multiple times and bring back the bottle what we also see here are some copy artifacts which make sense we got of course the blue power and the moat because you want to keep the uh, really big creatures at a distance so all in all, it looks like an uh, interesting pile of cards, and I'm very curious um, what's going to happen in the matchup. I'm very happy to kind of have this deck on the channel. So let's go ahead and look at my deck. I am playing with a green control deck today, and um, basically what I want to do with this deck is use green with artifacts to keep the board under control, hence the name <laughs> green control. Sorry. Um, what I have here are three icy manipulators, and I really need them in this deck because green has so much trouble with just dealing with creatures. And at least with the ICs, I can tap creatures down. I also have meek stones and the meek stones make sure that for instance, like a Sarah Angel, I can tap it down and it stays tapped. It's really a wonderful artifact and maybe a little bit underplayed or maybe not, but anyway, it has potential. And also we see here four Lana or else for your good old green ramp. So I'm hoping to go a little bit quicker than my opponent as well. And of course, do the little ice storm trick. So turn uh, two, hoping to cast an ice storm. I have four of those in the deck as well. But the ice storms are also there to just take care of special lands, such as the Library of Alexandria. 
And what else do we have in here that's kind of worth to discuss it? What's really nice is that little creature there of the dark. Uh, it's the tracker. It's for one green and two. It's a two, two creature. And this can actually remove creatures while well, remove them. What you do, it comes in the game. Uh, you pay two green and you tap it and it fights with another creature. So it deals his damage in power to another creature and it gets damage back in return. So it's just a two, two, but you can use it to kill all those annoying one ones. And maybe in this matchup, I can kill well, maybe an archaeologist, maybe even a Sage of Latinam, although it's a 1-2 creature, so that would be good. In you could, in theory, even call an, uh, kill an Atok with this tracker guy. And as you can see, uh, the two cards above there are Wailuli Wolves. And the Wailuli Wolves are 1-1 um, creatures, and you can tap them to give a creature plus 1, plus 1. And this works really nice with the tracker, but it also works really nice um, with the Meek Stone because of the... Um, uh, Mixstone only taps creatures that have power of three or greater and with the Wailuli Wolf you only give them plus one plus one until end of turn so the Mixstone doesn't have any effect during the untap phase then of the following turn if you can still uh, follow me. Um, I'm also playing with two Sylvan libraries obviously I, I think maybe Sylvan is the best card of green I actually in old school I think it's the best best green card and um, or is it regrowth? Maybe that's a nice discussion. Let me know in the post below if you think it's regrowth or Sylvan. But in this deck, it has another uh, double function actually because I'm also playing with the mirror universe. So I can use the Sylvan library to kind of drain my own life total, drawing a lot of cards and losing four lives each time in the process. So I can lose up to eight lives uh, per turn. And then I can use my mirror universe if my life total is low enough and I can switch our lives and maybe even finish it with a hurricane. Now this scenario, it's really my B scenario. It has never happened, but it would be pretty cool. Um, so let's quickly go to the games and, uh, and see how this matchup ends up. Game number one with Olaf on the left. Player from Sweden here starting with a Tundra. I'm starting with a Factory into a Soul Ring. And playing that second plane there. And playing a Forest here, turn two. Lunar Elf, no tapping a Soul Ring. Oh, that's even better. A Sylvan Library. Not taking any damage here because we're playing Swedish, so there's no mana burn. So we're both still on 20. There's a Soul Ring as well from Olaf. A pretty cool playmat, by the way. With that Swedish flag and Viking ship with goblins on them. Playing a bottle, and we talked about this card in the introduction. So this bottle works really well with the Martyr. Um, because if he decides to flip and he loses the flip, he gets five damage. But that five damage is being soaked up by the bodyguard, the martyr, who is a 1-6. In the meanwhile, I'm playing another factory and playing an elf here. And attacking with the 2-2, two -two, making it a 3, dealing 3 damage. The first damage dealt here in the game. And Olaf is on 17. Playing a mox jet here. And it's curious to see, is he going to use his bottle or is he going to wait for that martyr? to arrive. Oh, an interesting, playing an archaeologist, the card, oh, <laughs> this is nice actually. Uh, only losing a few cards with almost an empty hand there, playing that uh, Time Twister. And uh, wow, a lot of stuff happening here. So we both get to draw seven new cards and I believe I was losing, um, I could see a Crumble there in my hand and then Icy Manipulator, but it went very fast. So we're both gonna draw seven new cards here because of that Time Twister. And um, that archaeologist is going to work really well with the bottle because when he flips, he has to sacrifice the bottle. But with the archaeologist, he can get it back from his graveyard because archaeologist says uh, two white and tap and return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. Playing here a Mox Pearl, playing a Mana Vault, and then passing turn. So I've got a full grip of cards and three cards to look at because of the Sylvan. So that is pretty cool at the moment. Having to go through my hand here for a moment here, trying to remember what I have. Drawing a card. Um, not drawing any extra cards yet from the Sylvan library. And deciding to play a Pendlehaven here. And I wonder what I'm going to do. That's, I mean, it's great fun when you have a, a full grip of cards, but you have a lot of possibilities. So I just needed a moment in the tank there. Using my Pendlehaven here to pump my Lanawer, but the response there from Olaf with a Swords. 
It responds to the pump, so that means I only get one life, so I'm on 21 here. And using four here now to cast an Icy Manipulator, playing three Icy Manipulators in this deck, and I really enjoy it. Playing with Icy is great. Also nice because it can now tap that Mana Vault if he's not going to use it. Oh, and there he's playing the Martyr, so that's the 1-6. And look at this, it looks like he has his combo online, so now he can start flipping the bottle. And um, I believe we agreed upon that he would use a dice. We just thought that was the easiest. And 1, 2, and 3 means he gets a 5-5 five, five Jin. And 4, 5, and 6 means he gets 5 damage, so he loses the roll. So let's see what's going to happen here. Give me a 4, 5, ah, it's a 1. Okay, so he's getting a 5-5 five, five Flying Jin, and the bottle is going to the graveyard, but he can get the bottle back using the Archaeologist. <laughs> Look at this, playing a copy artifact. Oh, this is a horror scenario for me, because now he has two 5-5 five, five Jins. That means he has 10 damage up in the air. Of course, I have my Icy, but that's not gonna, gonna help me. I mean, that's just gonna save me five damage. And I really need a Meek Stone right now. So hopefully I can find one having that Sylvan Library on the battlefield, having a full grip of cards. Hopefully I have some answers. So that's going to be exciting here. Tapping five, playing a Cockatrice. So this is a two four flyer and this is actually a rare. A lot of people forget that, including myself, but it's actually a rare from green. I think it's pretty good. Every creature it blocks or gets blocked by dies. I'm also tapping another mana, it seems. Oh, and this is great. Having that Meek Stone online. So that means I have my Icy Manipulator Meek Stone combination. I'm pointing it out as well. And wow, what a match this is. So we both have kind of the idea of our deck now laid out on the table. And, you know, Olaf can endlessly make 5-5 five, five Flying Jins. I can all tap them down with my Meek Stone combination, Icy Meek Stone. So this is pretty cool. But the question is, are we now in a standstill or can we actually deal some damage here? Maybe I could just fly and, and attack with my cockatrice. It's only two, of course. So it's going to take take a while, but that seems to be my, uh, my option here. Looking at the cards here. And I think the Sylvan is really helping me in this, in this game. Having that Sylvan library since turn two really means that I can kind of select and get the cards that I need. There's another dice, uh, die roll, and there's another Jin because he had three, and in response, I'm tapping it with the Icy so that he cannot block my Cockatrice, dealing two more damage, playing an extra Icy. So things are really looking good for me, and I can really advise everybody who's looking at this, try it out, just play with two or three Icy Manipulators. It's, it's such a strong card, it's really amazing. Um, another 5-5 five, five Jin here tapped, And I'm pointing it out again, pointing at the Meek Stone, saying it doesn't really matter. But of course, he's going to activate it. And, oh, I, I, man, I, okay, I guess he's trying to show me to die, but I can see it. But it's another Jin, and wow, amazing. Like, Olaf, you rolled four times, and you got a Jin every single time. Man, that's good. I mean, we have to go to the casino together. Uh, let's see, okay, I'm... Oh, taking an extra card here, because I was taking damage. I'm going to 17, from 21 to 17. Taking an extra card here. And let's see what I'm going to do, because I guess I need to put some pressure on my opponent. Choosing to tap the Martyr, that means that uh, he doesn't have anything really to block with, because he's not going to block with the Archaeologist. So, I mean, that means he's going to get some damage here. And it looks like it's a total of 8 damage, because I'm also using that Pendlehaven to pump the Elf. And then end of turn, we can see Olaf activating his Archaeologist, taking back his bottle of Suleiman. And he's playing it right now. Activating it again. And <laughs> again, this is crazy. I mean, he hasn't taken five damage once. And obviously, his bodyguard is taking it. But still, man. Bring it back again. So he's going to try to actually make two of them in one turn. And I mean, what else can he do? And again, again, it's yeah. It seems like the 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 roll of the dice is just a formality, because he always has one, two, or three. Oh, is there even a four, five, six on there? Anyway, tapping that other gin, passing turn again, untapping. 
And I'm getting to look at the three cards again. And I'm putting them in order. Having my two ICs ready to tap everything. Playing a crumble here, I guess, I mean, does that really change anything? I'm not sure if that was the right play. At least it opens him up a little bit because I just want to do him a lot of damage. So I guess it was the right play, actually. Tapping here his Martyr and pumping his... Oh, my Lunar Elf here with the 2-3. And attacking here. And he's activating his own factory. Tapping his factory in response. Then he's he strip mining one of my factories. And playing a Giant Grove and that's game. <laughs> oh, wow. So I'm winning this game despite the fact that Olaf had his full combo on. But the Mixo was just too powerful for him. But now we're going to our sideboards. And uh, let's see what happens after sideboarding. Game number two with Olaf on the play here. The player on the left. It feels really good winning that, that first game uh, with that meek stone. I thought it was toast when the combo was on the board. And now uh, let's have a look what we can do in game two. And there's a City of Brass. Ooh, and that's a very strong start here with the Ancestral Recall. And I'm playing a forced passing turn. That's not the best start. And look at Olaf go. Wow, man. That's a, <laughs> that's a lot better than one basic land. Playing the Martyr here. I really like that uh, Martyr Mana Vault combo. So the Martyr is just taking the damage. He's pointing it out now as well. That Bodyguard taking all the artifact damage. Playing a Factory now as well. And look at his board state. And all I have are two Measly Forests. Tapping three. And oh, here we go. A Recall on the Recall. Oh, and that's interesting. He's putting away his um, Time Twister. That's an interesting choice. And that's his second Ancestral Recall. So turn one Recall and turn three Ancestral Recall. Oh, and this is cool. I'm playing the Avenger. And the Avenger actually has power and toughness equal to the uh, amount of artifacts that your opponent has in play. So in this case, my Avenger is a 2-2 creature. So that's pretty cool. And I guess when the factory gets animated into a factory worker, my Avenger turns into a 3-3 creature. Oh, man. Oh, man. Why? Why do you do this? Olaf, come on. Okay, I'm at 22 now. And he's playing a Soul Ring. And he's attacking with his Martyr and his Factory. So he's dealing some damage here. So I'm going to 19. And I'm playing out the Tracker. And that's actually pretty cool. So the Tracker is a creature that I talked about as well in the introduction. A 2-2 two -two creature for 1 green and 2. And you can pay 2 green, tap it, and it deals... 2 damage to target creature. So it deals damage equal to its power, I should say. It goes and fights the creature. It is, it's a tracker. It has found the creature and then fights the creature. But the creature also deals damage back according to its power. So in other words, it can kill 2-2 two, two creatures. It can kill 1-2 creatures. And you can trade it off with a 2-2 two, two creature. And there's another martyr on the board. So two bodyguards now. And it looks like he's not going to attack with the factory. Maybe I would have traded it off against a tracker, actually. Because a tracker can seriously be kind of a risky card. And using my mana now, I guess I'm not finding any extra mana, but using my four mana now to play an Icy Manipulator. And there, there it is, a bottle of Suleiman. And that could be a problem for me. So one, two, three means that he gets a gin. And whoa, okay, we couldn't see the roll, actually. It was out of the screen, but I guess it was a four, five, or six. So he got five damage. Soaking up by the Martyr. And look at this. Oh, this is nice. He's playing his Archaeologist, forgetting about the Tracker. So I can use the Tracker. Yeah, I'm using the Tracker. I'm Sorry, I'm just really happy. Using the Tracker, that, that's, that's one of the spare moments, rare moments, I should say, that I've used uh, the Tracker here. So killing the Archaeologist with the Tracker and also taking care of that annoying factory here. Not sure why he's actually untapping the manifold. Okay, so he's changing that. And things are actually not looking too bad anymore. I've kind of taken care of some of his uh, threats. He doesn't have a 5-5 five -five gin, so that's, that's very good. His archaeologist is in the bin. And his factory is in the bin. 
He's on 16, I'm on 19. But 1, 6 are pretty good blockers. And I'm attacking with one of them. And he decides to block him. Pumping it up to a 2, 3 means he's got 2 damage. And am I going to do something with the tracker here? Playing a giant growth. And then wanting to activate the tracker. <laughs> but in response, he's playing a sword. So does mean I get 2 more life. I think it kind of made a misplay here. It would have been better. Although, yeah, it would have been better to play my giant growth on the Lanora Elves. And after that, use the tracker to possibly kill the Martyr. Because then my opponent... Um, yeah, I guess in the end it wouldn't really have made a difference, by the way. But, okay, let's, let's get back at the game while I'm still trying to wrap my head around what happened. Anyway, he's on 14... And he's using his strip mine there for the Pendlehaven, and that's not great. Only three forests. Actually, I have those Lanowers, so it's not too bad. Playing another Icy Manipulator, and that means that I can start tapping both his Martyrs and perhaps dealing some damage again. Playing a Dust to Dust. Um, that's just a brutal sideboard card here. Oh my goodness. And I think now he has the upper hand again. So this game is going a little bit up and down. Playing another Ice Storm, again on his factory, attacking for two here. So he's already on 12. But I only have three forests and two elves. Oh, and look at that. He's playing that Archaeologist again. And this could be really problematic. And he's also found the Bottle of Soleil. And paying two, getting a Jinn. I mean, rolling two, getting a Jinn here. Oh my goodness. And all of a sudden, the tables have turned. I think after the Dust to Dust. Hey, there's a giant spider. That's pretty cool. So a giant spider, 2-4 creature, 1 green and 3. Iconic creature. And using a crumble here on at least one of the gins. But remember, he has that archaeologist that he's going to use right now to get back his bottle and activating it again. And look at him roll. It's unbelievable. He's only taken 5 damage once and getting a new gin again. If, if you can roll the dice like that, I understand that you play with the bottle. Playing another spider. But it is really cool to see this martyr deck uh, in action. So thank you, Olaf, for sharing it here on the channel. Oh, playing a mind twist. I'm giving you a compliment, man. And you respond by playing a mind twist. And there I go. I'm showing him actually two answers to his threats. I had a hurricane, but even cooler, I had a mirror universe in my hand. Oh, and that could have actually been um, kind of my victory because i could have taken like damage until i was on five life and then decided to play the mirror universe and then chum block with my spiders but unfortunately i didn't have the mana to cast the mirror universe and the mirror universe now gone at least finding my last icy mini ah, disenchant on my icy manipulator <laughs> i i need a little miracle here to win this game i have two spiders so i can still throw them in front of the bus but I'm probably deciding, rolling the dice, taking five damage here, and attacking, taking, I'm taking five damage as well, but the difference is that my opponent, Olaf, has his bodyguards that take care of him. And look at him go, using his archaeologist again. I must say this is a very, very cool deck. Attacking again, and deciding to block with a giant grove, a giant grove on a giant spider. And uh, it's not working, he's countering it. And that's actually the reason why I didn't block with my spiders before. Taking 5 damage again, so it seems that Olaf is running a little bit out of luck. But still, he has that perfect combo. And this is cool. This is the uh, the Druid. It's a 1-1 one, one creature. And every time my opponent plays an artifact, um, it actually gets plus 1, plus 1. So this is a card coming from my sideboard. And we can now see it in action. I think it's called Sitanol. That's how you pronounce it. I mean, I know what it's called, but how do, do I pronounce it? I think it's Sitanol Druid. And he's playing the bottle, and you can see my, my druid is getting a plus one, plus one counter. And it doesn't get a counter for the djinn, because your opponent needs to cast an artifact. At least it's cool to see this card in action. It's not going to save me, though. I'm on 5-5. Five five. He's got two 5-5s. Five fives. And I think, you know, the moment that he mind-twisted away my mirror universe was kind of end game here. Yeah, or I need a, a meek stone. And that's it, that's game. So that means it's 1-1, one, one, Olaf. Good game here. And uh, that means we're going to game number three.
Game number three, and at least I get to start. I mean, I'm really liking this game. It's very cool. Uh, the first game with the Meekstone, second game again with the bottle and, and the combo from Olaf. Uh, nice victory here. And, uh, well, victory. It's not yet a victory. It's 1-1. One, one. Uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Turn one, Lana or Elves. That's what you want to do when you play green. That's a classic opening here. And he's also not doing too bad there with that Mox Sapphire and that Factory. And also playing a Soul Ring here. And there it is. There is the Druid. And, okay, I wanted to say Counterspell for one blue. But, no, it's an Ancestral Recall. And he's drawing three cards. Yeah, it's the blue power. The blue power, man. It's tough. It's tough to play against. But it's cool to see a player like Olaf using the power to really do cool stuff. Playing a Soul Ring here, and that means I'm getting a plus one, plus one counter here. And let's see what else I can do. Playing a Factory here. Attacking with the 2 2 and the 1 1, and dealing damage. And playing a Giant Spider. So I'm putting some pressure here on the board. Hoping just to deal a lot of damage early game. I mean, I'm still playing that Hurricane that I could use as a possible finisher as well. And taking care here of the Druid. And I think that's a smart decision because he's playing with tons of artifacts. And let's see what I can do. Playing another four. I'm playing a book. I'm actually playing with, I believe, two of those, but we haven't seen them yet. And attacking with my Giant Spider. And he's deciding to take the damage, not taking the risk of animating his factory and possibly losing it against a crumble, maybe, or maybe a giant growth. And he's on 14. So things are not looking too bad for me. I'm a 22 here. And he seems to have some mana problems. And that is kind of holding him back here at this decisive third game. Taking another damage here from his City of Brass. And he is playing a Disenchant on the Tome. I think that's a good decision. Because with an active Tome, I could really do things. Oh, and this is painful. Playing an Ice Storm over his factory here. And going full in, attacking. Dealing five more damage. He's on eight life. And taking another damage, playing a Demonic Tutor. I mean, City of Brass is great, but in this case, when you're this low, you don't want to take extra damage. But he has no choice. He needs to find an answer. And actually, with the Monic Tutor, he's probably going to find it. And playing against Mono Green means that he doesn't have to be afraid for a counter spell. And animating here, attacking again. He's on two. And casting another Giant Spider. And what is he going to play? Oh, playing a moat. I'm liking it. He's on one life and he's actually playing a moat. Oh my, I completely forgot about the moat. So moat is a card from Legends, uh, two white and two. And it says non-flying creatures cannot attack you because, hey, you have a moat. So you have your drawbridge drawn in and you're behind the water. For some reason, I mean, I think my giant spider would cross the water, but okay, that's the way it is. So I cannot attack him. And that is, uh, yeah, this is a little frustrating. He's on one life. I'm on 22. I have some answers. I have a cockatrice, but I also have, of course, oh, look at that. Looking for those answers now. I also have an icy manipulator. So I want to tap his city of brass, then he dies. And I also have hurricane. And I believe those three cards are my answer. I also have chaos orb, by the way. So I can also kind of destroy um, his moat and I actually boarded out my tranquility forgetting about moat so that's a big mistake on my part and I have to pay for it now but I still have some out season one life I'm on 22 so this should definitely be possible and he's actually discarding I believe his mind twist so he's got a full hand but not finding the right mana and playing a Lotus now. So that should probably help him playing that Black Lotus. Not using it though. He's passing turn. And what can I do here? Paying four. And I'm playing. Oh, and he's countering it. The Icy. And then I'm crumbling his Black Lotus. 
I kind of it's kind of weird he has a full hand and so I I, I think if Olaf and I, I believe he's a good player and my hands empty by the way I just showed that um, he's probably going to keep his counter spells if he has any in hand but the chance is pretty big since he has a full hand to protect his moat because as soon as his moat is gone he's losing the game so or actually protect his moat but also um, making sure that I cannot tap uh, his city of brass so he's probably going to counter all my ICs the question is what's the best tactic here and tap in three playing an ice storm and is he going to counter the ice storm or not and this again is an interesting choice uh, from my part I'm not really liking the way I'm playing it here playing that ice storm on one of his lands um, it seems to be a logical choice uh, because he has less blue mana but I need to use this in a combination of spells instead of just a single playing it single uh, out as a single uh, playing an adventure it's not a threat so it's probably going to be allowed here uh, a nice 3-3 three, three avenger by the way and i think i should have used that ice store more in combination instead of just playing it as a, a loose spell and i'm doing it again right now it makes more sense And at least he loses another counter spell. I believe he plays with four counter spells, so that means that um, he only has two more left in his deck. And playing a Sylvan here, so that's going to help me dig. And I have twenty-two life, so I can like easily draw extra cards. So it looks like I'm still kind of ahead here of the game. I mean, I should be able to do him one more damage. And let's see what Olaf is going to play out here. Playing a Disenchant on the Sylvan. That's unfortunate. And so far, uh, my opponent manages to stay alive. Tapping five. Is there a Cockatrice coming? Because that's five mana. There is a Cockatrice. And does he have another? He has <laughs> another Counterspell. Counterspell number three. And while I'm looking at this, and maybe... Um, you can share it in the comments below. What I'm thinking about, the mistake that I feel I'm making here, is that I'm playing all my cards out directly. I'm not kind of saving them in my hand. I know he's discarded his Mind Twist already. Oh, look at this. He's got a Jin, so he can start dealing damage now. And he also has the Archaeologist to get it back. Oh, my goodness. So this is a big problem. But what I wanted to say, and look at me go there. So I'm going uh, to 17. What I wanted to say is I think I should have saved the um threats in my hand and then play them out in a row and look at this finding a meek stone so that means that the gin doesn't untap but i don't have the icy in combination so that does mean that when he makes a new gin he can at least attack with it once and that's five damage each and having that archaeologist means that he can keep bringing it back so i'm in deep trouble here playing a dust to dust oh yuck i'm in even deeper problems now trouble now i should say and am I going to actually lose this while well, my opponent is on one? And I've got a huge Avenger there, by the way. My Avenger is 7-7. Seven, seven. Because it grows with every gin. And here, blocking one of the gins with a giant spider, playing a giant growth on my giant spider. One of the things I like to do, because you get a giant, giant spider. Um, killing one gin, I'm on 12 life. Playing another meek stone. And playing a cockatrice here. Let's see what my opponent can do. Another counterspell. So this is counterspell number four. And then, oh, look at him go. Another gin. Oh, my goodness. It's looking bad for me here. I'm chum blocking one of them. And it looks like I'm taking damage. And my Avenger is growing because more and more Jinns are en en entering the battlefield. But I, I believe I'm giving it a counter every time an artifact comes in instead of counting. And now we're counting because I don't see eight artifacts on Olaf's side. Although there's a Mox there. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. The Avenger is being stopped by the moat. And he's attacking for 10 now. Or not. No, they're tapped actually. So they're still tapped because of the Meek Stone. And now he's making a new one. 
and bringing it back and yet again making a new one. Or not. Mm, yeah, he is. And another one. Wow. Oh, my goodness. I mean, he's on one life. And that means I'm taking more damage. Jump blocking there with one spider means I'm on seven. And he's also playing a copy artifact. My adventure is 11-11, by the way. All I need is one hurricane because he ran out of counter spells. That's all I need. I don't think I'm going to get it. It's just one of those games. And he's making it end of turn, so it doesn't have summoning sickness right now, so he can attack with both. And that's it. That's game. <laughs> oh, my God. My goodness. Olaf, very, very cool game. Um, yeah, when, I, when I'm looking back at this, I feel I should have saved up some of my threats in my hand and play them after each other instead of just one at a time because I'm kind of inviting you to counter. Uh, but nonetheless, well done, my man. You were on one, I was on 22, and you beat me with your, your Martyr deck. Thank you for bringing this deck uh, to the channel, and uh, thank you all for watching another game here at uh, the Timmy channel, Timmy Talks. If you'd like to watch more old school magic, you can click on the um, on the links that are appearing right now. The videos are appearing right now on the screen. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, please do to help me grow and uh, help the channel and help me to make more old school magic content. Also, let me know what you think of the game. What do you think of my decisions there uh, at the end? I mean, he was on one life. I just wanted to kill him. I mean, <laughs> my goodness. Anyway, congratulations, uh, Olaf uh, from Sweden. And um, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks. And see you next time.